Well, 2018, I sort of promised myself I'd uh, do my best to do a monthly video diary or video blog, vlog, or whatever you'd want to call it. Uh, we're currently on January January 30th, and um, it's not going that well as far as the, the video blog side of things is. Um, I started off the month right early on in January, um, doing a bit of pike fishing with a friend of mine. And due to the nature of the water we was fishing, um, we was trying to keep it right under our hats. So I thought it best not to do the filming there because I didn't want to ruin the fishing for him and sort of give away the location. Um, but it went quite well. Um, I've tried for years to get a £20 pike and I've been all over the place trying to do so. And I've come close a few times, I've had quite a few sort of 16, 17s and a couple of 18s. Um, very first session out with my friend on this new water he put me onto. Uh, less than two hours in, bang, £20 four eighths, £20 14 ounce, uh, I couldn't have been more happy, uh, I really was over the moon, like I said it's been something I've been trying to get for a long time so I was quite happy to just sort of tick that off. Um, this particular water we know holds more 20s and we know holds bigger 20s, so I, we persevered or I persevered going back a couple of hours in the afternoon, just sort of keeping mobile, one rod, just trying swims, moving around and Less than two weeks after having the first 20, I had my second 20, which was uh, 20, po 20 pound, two ounces. Um, so, like buses, you know, I've tried for years to get myself a 20, uh, and in less than two weeks I got two. Um, I had quite a few sort of smaller fish along the way, up to sort of eight or nine pound, but I didn't bother photographing or doing anything with them, because you have to be so careful about the background in your photos and not giving away the location, it just wasn't worth the hassle. We sort of reserved that just for the bigger fish. Um, since then, I didn't really haven't really done a lot. I um, done a little bit of perch fishing a couple of weeks ago, literally a couple of hours in the evening, and uh, I actually did manage to get a bit of video footage of that. So we'll tag that on in here. Right, I'm going to make this fairly quick. I'm really seriously losing the light. A uh, bit of opportune angling today. Finished work a bit early. So mega mild for January. I couldn't sort of pass up the uh, the opportunity to get some baits out. Um, Opted to do a bit of perch fishing on a local commercial. And it's gone quite well. I've had three fish, no monsters. Biggest one touched over two pound, two pound and a few ounces, but all between sort of 112 and 24. Um, I'll give you a quick look now because I really want to start concentrating on getting packed up now because I'm really seriously losing the light. Uh, that's the smallest one, I think. Yeah, that's the smallest one. Um, this is probably the next best. Oh, a little bit lively. And uh, this is the biggest one so far. I'm going to give it a little bit longer. Basically, so I can't see anymore. Um, this one was just so uh, just a touch over two pound, two pound, three or two pound four, I can't remember. Um, yeah, all, all quite good. Barch came really quickly, all, all sort of really close together. Um, sort of a small feeding spell, if you like, uh, and all, all on one rod, like re literally recasting, bang, 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 like that. Must have just hit into a little bit of a shoal. Uh, I apologise if the lighting's not great and the sound's not great. I didn't come prepared today at all. Um, I'm balancing my camera on some buckets. I've even got a tripod, I've got no mic, and I've got no lights. So, uh, yeah, hopefully you can see me. So, as you can imagine, I was really pleased with that perch session. Um, no monsters, like I said. Apologies for the video quality and the sound quality. Uh, I really didn't come prepared. Um, it was last minute, sort of got off work early and decided to run down and uh, take advantage of a bit of a mild spell. Um, but it went well, like, like you see, I had a few fish and uh, I was really chuffed. And fishing went on the back burner for a week or so. I had the, um, the Brentwood Carp Show coming up and uh, as some of you know, I'm also a tattooist and I last year uh, set it up so I could tattoo at the show and um, it was a lot of hard work with the council and backwards and forwards but we got all the licenses in place to do it properly, I didn't want to sort of uh, risk my livelihood by going out trying to do it under the radar, I got it all by the book uh, and it went really well last year and it went even better this year, you know, I had loads of customers, uh, quite a few people I tattooed last year that had waited a whole year to get tattooed again. Um, Probably the highlight for me was uh, a guy called Jonathan who was uh, working on a stand opposite mine. Um, he lost the lower half of his, of his leg in an accident uh, a few years back and um, 
he was lucky enough to be able to fly to Australia and uh, get this incredible prosthetic uh, made of latex, which if I was to show any of you, just looking at it, you'd say it's, it's a real foot, lower leg. It is absolutely incredible. It's got real hairs, toenails, the detail is, is unbelievable. And uh, he said to me, how, how do you fancy tattooing my prosthetic? And um, I said, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to give it a go. Uh, albeit with a little trepidation because I've never done it before and he then told me that the prosthetic was uh, worth in the region of £12,000 well that's what it cost him so I'm not afraid to admit that I was more nervous tattooing that prosthetic than I am tattooing a real human being I know where I am with human skin I didn't know where I was with latex but um, we did it he was really pleased with the result um, and he's already talking about setting up another one so we can get some more tattoos on, on his prosthetic um, so that was cool, you know, I met loads of great people at the show, tattooed friends, met friends, had a chat. It was good, I, always, I do enjoy the shows for, the, for that sort of social aspect of things. I did intend to do some video footage there as well, but it was so busy, I just didn't get a chance. I didn't really get a chance to leave my stand or even do as, as much as setting up a camera. I had it all with me, just didn't get a chance. Um, and that sort of brings us nicely to today, which is the, my last fishing session of January. Um, and I'm back where you saw me a few minutes ago perch fishing a couple of, which would have been a couple of weeks ago um i got a bit later than i did last time um so it was sort of a mad rush trying to get myself sorted and get the get the swim primed but i've got two baits out um i don't really expect anything just yet um it does tend to fish better just into dark so we'll see the baits are out it's quite a bit colder today than it was last time a bit of frost on, on the ground this morning but uh, you can but hope. Well, regulars to my YouTube channel probably would have seen my uh, a bit of my perch fishing in the past and, and how I fish them with rigs and baits and things like that. Uh, and I got quite a few comments from people actually asking about the, the setup I use. So I'm going to quickly run you through that um, and just give you a, a rundown of, of how I, I sort of approach it. Uh, I've got these set of uh, one and three quarter um, rods, ten foot long. Uh, I had built for me by uh, by Dave Black, who unfortunately isn't um, isn't building rods anymore, which is a real shame because they're almost certainly the best rods I own. Uh, I think they're built built on Harrison blanks. Um, there's loads of cool little features to them, like wooden reel seats and uh, bits and pieces, and got some custom custom writing above above the uh, the reel seat there. Um, down to the reels, I use uh, the Daiwa SS1300. Uh, reels, the tournament reels, um, they're perfect for this sort of thing, you don't need to be chucking far, most of my perch fishing is under 30, 40 yards, um, so them loaded with uh, some 8 pound mono, it's perfect and covers me for everything. The one thing people do, do tend to ask me quite a lot are um, my bite indicators, now for those of you more into carp fishing it's uh, probably not something you're that used to seeing, but these are made by a company called Zandavan and they're called Rollovers. Now, I use this for quite a lot of my fishing. I use them for all of my leisuring, for pike, um, my eel fishing, um, some of my catfish fishing, uh, and all of my perch fishing. Now, the idea of it is with, with your predator fishing and how I like to fish, um, I like to minimise resistance. I really do believe that it makes a massive difference um, to converting runs into landed fish. Uh, if a fish takes a bait uh, and feels any sort of resistance, Predator wise, they don't feed. Let's remember, they don't feed like carp. Um, they'll just spit the bait, and, and you'll get so many ejected runs. With these, the benefit of these is the way they work. There's a ball bearing inside these tubes that weights down the front with your line under that crook. Now, what happens is you'll get a tape. I'll turn the alarm off so it's not annoying. You get a tape, and the fish will pull line. And what happens? That roll over will lift up keeping it exactly steady resistance and as it lifts up the ball bearing inside will roll backwards inside the tube until it gets to a point where it kicks the roll over back and then you're fishing with an open bail arm. That allows the fish to take as much line as it needs to for you to then hit, lift up the rod, feel for the resistance and, uh, and set your hook. Um, and they're incredibly simple contraptions but they really, really, really do work. And I've tried to sort of uh, 
explain this to people uh, why they work and how they work and it's just something that's not publicised a lot so I feel like I should just comment on that um, before I move on from my perch fishing for the year and just get uh, sort of squeeze that into the video blog. Um, the other thing I'm just going to circle back a little bit, uh, a lot of people say that one and three quarter rods are quite heavy for perch fishing, you know, in a dream situation. Um, a little bit of an indication there. Uh, in a dream situation, you're going to be catching four pound fish at most. Um, you know, some of us will go our whole lives and not see four pound fish. A one and three quarter rod does seem a little bit over the top for that. You could probably get away with a, a pound or a pound and a quarter. The reason I like to fish with a heavier rod is I fish with quite heavy leads. When I'm fishing resistance three rigs, i.e., running any type of running rig, the last thing I want is when I get that take is for the lead to move. I want to know that that lead is sitting absolutely firm and the line is pulling off free. So one and three quarters, you know, with a, a three, four ounce lead sometimes, plus bait, make sure that I can control the cast any any lighter than that and uh, you really be undergunning yourself with the cast and limit your fishing. Right, well I've had a little bit of a change of tactics. Um, not majorly, I'm still going to fish my live baits as I usually do. Um, but they haven't produced yet and it, on the day they may not pull a fish out. Uh, a friend of mine has been fishing over this particular venue quite a lot recently and uh, he has been catching the odd reasonable perch on lobworm. So I sort of came with that in mind that if the live baits weren't going to fish or I couldn't catch the live baits, which I have struggled today, um, I grabbed a pot of lobs when I got maggots and I brought my uh, 14 foot Acolyte Plus and uh, I sent a pin loaded with four pound line. I'm not fishing far out, I'm just literally fishing a, a few foot past the rod tip. Um, it's basically, it's where I've been feeding maggot trying to catch the live baits. So I do think that the perch might, as the, the light drops, just pull in on that and I might pick one up on a lob. Um, so I'm going to fish that in, in up till dark basically. Virtually as long as I can see the float. Uh, once I can't see it anymore I'll pull this in, pack it away and I'll just carry on fishing with the, the live bait rigs on the alarms so I can fish them into dark for a bit longer. Uh, I can't stay too late tonight, uh, I've got to be home at a reasonable time. So we'll fish a little bit into dark and um, try and nick one out. Right, well, unless something particularly spectacular happens in the next uh, 20 to 25 minutes, uh, I think that's the end of today. Um, been quite disappointing really, I've been really lucky over this winter. I've, I haven't blanked yet for the perch. Still got a little bit of time left, but I thought I'd just round this up before we lose the light. Um, this is also going to round up my January video blog, so looking on to February, um, certainly be some more pike in before the season ends, um, maybe some more perching if the, if the conditions sort of dictate it's worth doing. Um, and then really for the spring, my head's into carp. My syndicate I know fishes really well throughout the spring, sort of March, April time, so coming into sort of February I'll start looking for some spots, start tricking a little bit of bait on them, and hopefully by the time I come around to start fishing it, the fish will already be on my spots hard and uh, bite should be pretty easy to come by. Um, but thanks for watching. Uh, again, apologies, it's not more action packed, but the um, situation sort of dictated that I couldn't do as much filming as I'd like to, plus the fact that uh, I've perhaps been a little bit lazy with it. Uh, but February, I hope we'll have a bit more to it. I'll try and get a bit more footage of actual fish rather than just me nattering away. Uh, so thanks for watching, and uh, see you next month.